Dateline, Monroeville, Pennsylvania. Let's go right to the news story to see what they put in a little bit and what they left out a whole lot. Good evening, I'm Paul Martino. Monroeville Mall was the scene of a huge fight early this morning involving hundreds of college kids who were holding a party. When Monroeville police arrived, someone began firing at the cops. It's not the first time violence has broken out at this mall. Bob Allen now with the story. Police say nearly a thousand college students, many riding school buses, showed up at an all white out party last night at Winghart's Burger and Whiskey Bar at the Monroeville Mall. But we know three came from California, California University, and we believe other uh, individuals came from Indiana University, IUP, Edinburgh, Slippery Rock, um, possibly as far as Gannon up in here. But the fun was short lived. Violence soon broke out, with many rushing to leave the restaurant and parking lot. When we first arrived there, there were some fights and disturbances because the building was overcrowded. Uh, early on, within the first five to ten minutes of the event, uh, gunshots rang out in the parking lot. Uh, multiple shots were fired. Police say no one was shot, but two people were injured. They learned later that the party was rescheduled at the last minute at Winghart's. It was originally planned for the Liquid Club and Lounge in White Oak. Several organizers posted messages on Twitter saying the party was moved. Since the party location was switched at the last minute, neither Monroeville police or the Monroeville Mall had any knowledge that it was coming to Winghart's. Social media got us again here, it looks like. Police are concerned they were not notified by the restaurant for safety planning. You know, the issue here at the mall uh, that, that Winghart's was not paying attention to was obviously they were over occupancy. So you have a fire hazard or fire panic hazard or a building code issue. One person was arrested for disorderly conduct. Right now, the incident remains under investigation. Bob Allen, KDKA TV News. Okay, so here's what they left out. This was an all-black party promoted by black people to black students at black colleges and fraternities all over the Pittsburgh area. This Monroeville is 10, 15 miles outside of Pittsburgh, 10 miles from Three River Stadium. So they left that part out. Two, they, when they did talk about how they moved it, but when they moved it, they told the restaurant owner that it something totally different than what it was. So all of a sudden, all these people showed up at this, this, this restaurant, and the guy had no idea what was going on there. And so and you saw, uh, uh, here's another thing. They had to call in 20, 20 other police departments for help. They put out one of those, all, you know, all, but, you know, all available people around, you know, the Eastern United States, if you have a badge and a car, get your butt up to Monroeville Mall, where this was. Oh, and by the way, you guys probably, some of you may remember Monroeville Mall. That's where Monroeville is, um, uh, and the mall, that's where they made the, the Dawn of the Dead movie. That's where it kind of all began back in 1978, 79. Okay, so. So that's what happened. A lot of argy bargy, a lot of violence, a lot of chaos, a lot of mayhem. And CBS even said they were shooting at the police. We'll, we'll, we'll see more more attacks on police in that area in a minute. But but let's talk about how. So so where do we go next? If this were just one incident, one mall, one party, then it would be like. We wouldn't be we wouldn't be we wouldn't be having this conversation. I wouldn't be making this video. You wouldn't be watching it. But it's not. It's part of a pattern. It's not just part of one pattern. It's part of you know half a dozen patterns. So this is a pattern of black mob violence at college spring break. This is a pot pattern of black mob violence at all black parties. This is a pattern of black mob violence during uh, uh, co black college fraternity parties. This is a pattern of black mob violence in Monroeville. So, you know, we could, uh, uh, you know, actually, and a lot of those things uh, uh, I, I covered in the, the new book, Don't Make the Black Kids Angry. Uh, that's Monroeville is actually featured in the new book. 
So why don't we do this? Why don't we focus on this one little aspect of the story? The, the epic level of black mob violence in Monroeville, in that area, since Christmas. So what's this? Uh, January, February, March, uh, less than, you know, less than four months ago. Let's take a look. Breaking now, Monroeville Mall brawl. All the stores shutting down early. And more video. This from viewer Corey Clemente. And just take a look at this. More fights, more punches, more scuffles. Yeah, Andrew, it doesn't end there either. Watch. Look at that. More video. This from Cody Brenner tonight. Watch as security runs down the halls as more chaos spills all across the first floor. Look at that. Pittsburgh's Action News 4 reporter Kelly Brennan. Chaos really... Kelly, the best way to describe it. Yeah, you just talked to police about what started all of this. What in the world went on there? This is one of the many videos that we received from witnesses tonight. Monroeville Police Chief Doug Cole says within three hours, at least six or more fights broke out inside the mall. The first fight happened around 5 o'clock. Things started to die down a little bit, but then more teens started to arrive and it only began to escalate all over again. At least two separate fights ended in injuries with two teenagers uh, taken to Forbes Hospital tonight with injuries that are not life-threatening. Now, Chief Cole says Monroeville called for backup, and as many as five departments had to respond tonight. Mall management decided to close early, starting around 8:30. And in all, police estimate about 1,000 teenagers congregated here throughout the night. That continued uh, to cause more issues in the mall itself, with groups moving through the mall. Uh, it appeared to be no set type of a protest, it's just that there were many juveniles. And juveniles, I mean, the age category of 14 to 19 or 20 years of age. Yeah, there you go. One more look at that incredible video. Certainly a lot more to learn about here, a lot more to come from this, so do stay with us on air. Surveillance video inside the Macy's at the Monroeville Mall gives investigators a clear image of what happened the night of February 8th. According to the DA's office, the alleged shooter is 17-year-old Terod Thornhill. He's seen here wearing all black with a white belt. They believe he leaves the mall to go outside and get a gun from a vehicle. When he returns, you see a group of males gathering on the left of your screen. Now, in the center aisle are Tom and Mary Singleton and their 13-year-old son. Just ahead of them is 20-year-old Devon Jones. Jones is believed to be the intended target. Just a second later, the first shot is fired, and it appears that Jones takes the first hit. The Singleton family drops to their right as the group of males starts to run. Investigators allege Thornhill is still pointing the gun toward the victims as the group runs out of the store. Jones was shot three times, and detectives say he is back in Forbes Hospital, and because of nerve damage, he's lost use of his left foot. Tom Singleton was shot in the leg, severing his femoral artery. His wife, Mary, was shot in the shoulder. It happened right here at the railroad tracks. They threw rocks that they found near the railroad tracks, according to investigators, at officers who were trying to move those teens off of the waterfront's property. Now, police tell me that a lot of teens have been coming here since Monroeville Mall no longer allows them there alone, but police tell me the waterfront is no different. It is a sight you will see more often here at the waterfront. I'm glad that they're patrolling the area more. For police, the added patrols are necessary. They say the shopping area has suddenly been flooded with kids, large groups of them late at night and on the weekends, creating chaos and committing crime. They're throwing rocks, they're throwing chickens around the giant eagle. Jerry Miller owns the Blue Dust. His business sits just across the tracks from the waterfront, and he has witnessed the groups of kids now filling the waterfront firsthand. Police herded them out, and there's probably at least a gang of a hundred of them going across the tracks, and the police were chasing them all. Police say the kids began gathering here right after Monroeville Mall put in a policy keeping kids without supervision away after certain hours. That was in response to this shooting inside the Macy's there. Homestead's police chief, Jeffrey DeSimone, tells me after that, things got rough. On Saturday, March 14th, the waterfront was filled with kids. Police made seven to eight arrests, and an officer was attacked. 
Police say it happened right here by the railroad tracks and that the kids started throwing rocks at the officers who were telling them to leave. We actually locked the doors to make sure they didn't come in. But police say there is no good reason for them to be at the waterfront alone. The movie theater doesn't allow kids alone after 8 and Dave and Buster's requires any minors to be with someone at least 25. Well, kids need a place to go. But police say the three departments that patrol here are not playing games, kids or not. They say they will take swift action and make arrests. So how many episodes of black mob violence were there over the last couple, just couple of months? I lost track. As soon as they got into that neighboring town where the guys started talking about how the kids, were, the kids, now they have me talking in euphemisms. Every single person involved in this large scale episodes of mob violence was black. Uh, they start talking about the, the black people who went into the grocery store, tossing chickens, tossing this, tossing that. 100 people, 100 black people throwing rocks at cops. This is Monroeville, Pennsylvania. Ever hear of it? I never did before Christmas. Now it's like I hear about it all the time. But here's the point. Monroeville is just one more example of the greatest lie of our generation, the greatest hoax of our lifetime. And that is, that black people are relentless victims of relentless white racism all the time, everywhere. That explains everything, especially here in Monroeville over the last few months. Let's just take, let's look at another example of somebody actually saying that recently. It feels like open season on black men in America, and I'm outraged. In fact, all Americans are at risk when bad actors in law enforcement use their guns instead of their heads. Despite bi bipartisan nationwide calls for action, and despite my bills to reform the broken grand jury process, hold police accountable, and end militarization, and despite my colleagues' bills to encourage body cameras, this Congress does nothing. Okay, does anybody remember Congressman Johnson? He's been in Congress, I think, uh, five and a half years now, five years. In addition to being an expert on how black people are relentless victims of relentless white racism all the time, everywhere, and that explains everything, he also has an extensive background and expertise in geology, especially marine geology. Let's see if you remember um, his testimony uh, as part of a congressional committee. Yeah, my, my fear is that uh, the whole island will uh, become so overly populated that it will tip over and, uh, and capsize. Uh, we don't anticipate that. The, uh... Okay, so we can have a little bit of fun with Congressman Johnson and what a goofball he is. But here's the point. Congressman Johnson may be kind of nutty on the subject of Guam, but on the subject of black people being relentless victims of relentless white racism all the time, everywhere that explains everything, especially the big bad cops that are always picking on black people for no reason whatsoever, he's not an outlier. This is mainstream talk you hear from the president, the attorney general, Everybody in the Department of Education, Department of Labor, all the way down to the Little League mom in Chicago. When her team, when her son's team was disqualified, she came out right away on TV, explained it all for us, that it was all about white race, racism, targeting black people for no reason whatsoever. Happens all the time. I don't, I just don't think enough people know that this is, this is actually how pervasive and deep and widely and strongly held this attitude is. That's what we have to learn. That's why you have to like this video. That's why you have to share it. That's why you have to go over to my website, whitegirlbleedalot.com, sign up for my newsletter. And of course, read that new bestseller, Don't Make the Black Kids Angry, that documents this with videos, links, 911 calls, police reports, witnesses, victims. You need to read it we got a lot of work to do people this is colin flaherty reminding you don't make the black kids angry <laughs>